Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Nick Armenis and in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the dark side of Performance Max campaigns. Now, Performance Max campaigns uh, have become really, really popular, myself included. There's plenty of people out there putting lots of content on there. I use them consistently. I know a lot of you do as well, but there are some real, I guess, trends I'm seeing emerging that not worry me, but they're just things to be aware of. It's not all perfect. It's not a campaign type that will completely save a business. It's something that you need to be aware of. There's particular things in the way they work, in some settings, uh, and then what to do when things just aren't growing. Because the first and biggest obstacle I find is that Performance Max campaigns seem to really, really, because they're optimizing for conversions, they will target branded terms first and remarketing really, really heavily. And while this is amazing, and you will see good results in lower budgets, once you push above, and I'm just saying a figure, I'm seeing a lot of people might see more and it would depend on your market and traffic. When you're pushing $50,000 a month plus, even to say $100,000 a month, in that range, sometimes lower, in that range, I'm really noticing that you hit a point with performance max where you get really diminishing returns and you cannot spend any more easily. And I found back when I was using shopping campaigns that I actually was able to push and get a lot more products seen a lot easier. And I was able to get colder traffic to my website and to convert more. And while this may seem a little bit strange for a lot of you and you may not be pushing those numbers, the downside is that the lack of control um, really starts to show sometimes and the fact that you really don't know what you're optimizing for other than what's in that insights tab, like which keywords. What you'll find is quite often a handful of products will get seen a lot, everything else does not get seen. Now, the way around that is multiple campaigns. And this is where I'm going with settings and structure and things like that of what you need to know that you might hit this obstacle a lot lower, particularly if you have a really small remarketing audience, you're probably gonna hit this really early on. You might only be doing $100 a day, $200 a day, and hit this problem. The other thing you're gonna be watching for is if your branded search terms start to explode in cost, it's generally I find because of smart bidding and performance max campaigns. So it's a bit of a tricky one. You may be able to reach out to Google to get them to be added as negative keywords. That's one option, but it's not ideal to have to manage like that. So it would be nice to be able to add negative keywords into those campaigns. But where I was going with this is segmentation is key with Performance Max. And if you have a lot of products or if you're finding that your performance has really hit a ceiling, you're probably going to need to start segmenting more. Now, the way I would go about that is just think about it logically. Because this is machine learning, you will want to start thinking, okay, which products can I group together from a campaign management, but an end customer point of view. So if it's a product that you can easily market with another, then put them together. But the best way to think about it is collections, brands, uses, types of products, the more of those you can group together. Like for example, if you have a pet store and you sell dog products, you sell cat products, and you sell bird products, each one of those could be their own campaign. And if you had them all together, I would still recommend having a catch-all campaign, but add a target ROAS on, and have it the target ROAS lower on the collection specific campaign. So the dog, campaign will have a different target row as to the catch-all, as will the cat, bird, etc. So doing this will allow more of your products to be seen and having that target row as set lower will make sure that it bids more aggressively. And I find that quite often you are gonna to have to keep segmenting and do this more and more and more. So you will then probably take your dog products. Then you might actually have a campaign with a lower target row as again and it might contain your leashes, you might do another one for your um, protection for dogs, for your kennels, all those sort of things. You might start 
having multiples of campaigns. Now, the tricky bit is don't go too crazy with this. This would be the case if you have kind of maxed out your ability to spend more profitably uh, and if you have a lot of zombie products. And zombie products are the products that just aren't seen. My other suggestion with performance max campaigns that can really save uh, your store and actually help you scale more is to run a catch-all standard shopping campaign alongside it. This surprisingly can actually really, really deliver some strong results and get some products seen that haven't been seen before. So guys, to wrap it all up, while Performance Max campaigns are a really quick and easy way to get your products seen across all of Google, there are some dark sides, some downsides to it, or more, probably not even dark, just something to be aware of, because this is where things are heading. They're heading towards more automation rather than less, towards less control. Just be aware that one of your biggest factors is gonna be segmentation, and don't forget the basics. Don't forget your shopping optimization, your search optimization, and don't forget to optimize your landing page and backend for conversions. The more conversions you can feed Performance Max, the better. The better your campaigns will perform, the more you'll be able to scale. So I hope you found this useful, particularly if you've hit a roadblock in your scaling. Um, if you ever did want me to look at your ads, please apply, there'll be a link below. Um, do tend to work with people that are spending probably north of five to 10,000 a month, and ideally in the 25,000 per month spend plus, that's the people that I can help the most in the higher ends of spend, all the way up into the millions of dollars of spend. Just because in those lower areas, it is a little bit harder to assist. Sometimes it's often product related, website related, uh, and things like that. But if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe guys, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next one.